Yes, you lovely people. If you're not already, make sure you give us a follow over on Spotify. I saw the, the, the funniest lap dance ever. <laughs> so, cause, so one of the lads has to do a lap dance on the other lad. You, know, you have to spin for the second one. Oh, the, the best ever. Funniest ever when you thought, you, you must do this at home. Man. You know, you're like Gene. Not that I've ever been to a lap dance. Of course. Like that clear. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to the Fozcast. We've had a couple of weeks off, but we are back with a bang. We are here today with one of the most straight talking, straight to the point. He's actually a bit of a cool hero in the Premier League, actually. One of the coolest managers out there, Sean Dyche. How are you, mate? Good, thanks. Good. You okay? Yep, good. Um, Just rehydrating after a couple of lager shandies last night. That's the beauty of it now. Mm. That brings me straight into my first question. So I'm not playing football at the minute. You're not managing at the minute. How does how does it work for a manager out of work? What, what what's life like? Well, it's, it's the yin and yang when you're in it. So I'm, um, you know, I said to you, but when when you're in it and you're getting on with it, I wasn't de de energized or anything. I wasn't ready to come out. Yeah. But then when you do come out, you go and you sort of decompress. You know, it takes you a bit of time. You go, all right, you know. Yeah. So I'm in that pretty good period where you go, well, was that it for nine and a half years? If you imagine since I was 16, I went into football at 16, I've only ever had three and a half, four months off, as in off when wow. I got sacked out of Watford. Yeah. Actually out of work. Yeah, like when you just yeah. downtime. Yeah. So then you go, well, actually then, you probably sort of weirdly need a bit of downtime, but you, but when you're in it, you don't think it, yeah. but cracking it on, you know what I mean? And then when you come out of it, you go... I don't right. think a lot of people understand that with, with players and managers. It's like, obviously with people with standard jobs that can take annual leave, Christmases, you, you're not there for birthdays maybe you yeah. can't choose exactly when you go on holiday well, I, I took a few mates away um a few weeks ago and it's the first time ever in my life apart from being a little kid that i've been away in july uh, sorry yeah. yeah no august yeah august, first time ever and, you know everyone goes away in sort of july but end of july did august. it feel different just more people around yeah you know, normally i mean I, I got used to i'm sure you agree you know with, with or when i you know made a bit of a bigger name for myself when when you when you're in them nice windows sort of late May, June, it's actually quite nice, you know, because it's kind of not that many people, wherever you go, they're not really, it's not mad, you yeah. know what I mean? So you actually, you can mooch around and live a pretty normal life, you know what I mean? Whereas when I went away the other week, obviously people, it's like a selfie off, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I bet loves, you're getting powders, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah, everyone loves a selfie, you know what I mean? And so you just, you're just constantly doing selfies for someone or another. <laughs> so it's so, the weirdest so, thing, I, I don't know what that's all about. I mean, I was, some people I go, you know, some, a bit like an old lady come up and go, can I have a selfie? Can I, have a selfie? I feel like I'm, what, what are you going to do? No one does autographs that? anymore. No. Autographs are out the window. So you know you know. about a week later, if you like me anyway, you certainly sort of go through your photos to delete them. Someone just goes, sure, no, boom, that's going. Nah, no chance. Yeah, it's going Mourinho, straight on Instagram. Mourinho, right, that's nah. staying. But if you're me, they go, ah, no. That's what are you, are you on social media yourself? <laughs> no, excuse me, no. Nothing? No. I love that. I'm um, not against it though. Yeah, okay. Popular you, misconception, I'll clear up just quickly. Everyone go, oh, sure, no, it's against. I'm not against social media at all. It's an absolute misconception. I just didn't see the value in it with football yeah. and footballers because I think it brings too much heat. Yeah, sure. That was it. But I'm not absolutely not against social media at all. I think for the younger players out there, I think it's a problem. I agree with you. I think for younger players, it's a problem and they get too much into it and it's like they live their life around this thing. I think when you're a bit older, you understand it a bit yeah, more. Yeah, and you can take the hits a bit more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Young, them hits feel hard. You know what I mean? It's If you're like me, when I was playing, you know, you're reading the page, see if you've got seven oh, out of nice. ten. It's mad, six. isn't it? Yeah. Whereas you get to year five being a football league, like, been there. But the first five years, you're really impressionable. And the weirdest thing that I say to some of the youngsters, I go, you know people are giving you hits who know nothing about what you do. Yeah. And yet, weirdly, you'll take some kind of either grandeur or a hit from someone who, with all due respect, might be an IT consultant telling you that you're brilliant or you're not. You've and never met this person. Know, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're never going to meet this thing. person. Yeah. It's mad, somehow it? it now holds all this power. I know. It's easy that though. That does worry me, not just for football, for society. It worries me that. Yeah, Kids and that, that. getting mad on that. You I'm know, with about you. People they don't even know. It's easy for weird. people to say though, just ignore it, just ignore it. But when it's not happening to them, like if you get it and you, it's, it's hard to not look at it, especially if you're of an age yeah. and people go, ah, oh, don't matter. But when it's said about you and someone's going, uh, it, it's hard not to take it personally, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, even, you know, with the role I had as a manager, you still get some hits about stuff that you go, really? You know, or, or uh, you know, yourself um, from your career, they, they, a photo tells this story that's not even a story. Yeah. I mean, I got a photo, the, when I got the sack, I went to this thing in, in Nottingham, uh, uh, like a band reunion thing, and I was with Stephen Reid, yeah. and it was always planned, we were always gonna do it, but then there was this like big hurrah, and what happened was, we were going into the doorway, right? This is how it all goes mad. 
going in the doorway and the lead singer from the Clone Roses, right? Yeah. He, he, he comes up, <laughs> seriously, it's brilliant. He was at Rock City. He comes up and goes, all right, Daichi, what are you doing now? I said, come for a night out. Left it a bit later yeah. so everyone's in. Just sneak in the back door, nice. a bit of fun. And he went, do you want to come back and you know, have a beer? So I went, yeah, see, did you mind if I have a picture? Boom, it's out there. Then all of a sudden, you know, Deitch after getting sacked goes out to club and all that. I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and you just and, it you, and we had a great night, a really good crack, really good night with some really nice people, and it sort of gets swerved into yeah, this weird story of like you should be at home yeah, with your head in your crying, hand, yeah. yeah, crying, yeah. yeah. What am I going to do? Just, and on the Saturday, same thing up and had a couple of beers um, in the afternoon. My mate and my son, my own son, nice, isn't but, it? Yeah, but no, but then that story goes out like this is how Sean Knight was reacting to being sacked. I was like, well, I'm just with me lad. You know, just live a normal life. That's yeah. what normal folk do all the time. Yeah, but then isn't if you, it's almost like you're sort of not allowed in some view. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I went to TGI Fridays last night actually with my son. It was his birthday last week, so his grand, his his, um, his uh, godparent dropped by. He was like, come on, let's go for some food. Do you want? Should we go into Cov T TGI? Is all right, cool. Mate, there's a kid sitting over there, right? And as soon as he walks in, I was thinking, oh, for God's sake, because like he sat there. There's a few kids, and I'm thinking they've noticed me, blah blah blah. And I'm thinking, just just have your wits about you. Don't let him be videoing you. And at one point, I've got these chicken wings, don't you, right? And I'm chatting. <laughs> and it is, and it's shit. But it's normal life. That's what people do. You ain't gonna do it with a knife and fork. You're just eating away on a chicken wing. And I look up, and this dickhead is videoing me yeah, with his phone. Yeah, yeah, it's really oh, weird. Oh, it's so horrible, isn't it? Everywhere you go. I've had that. I've had uh, weird with me and only had. Um, well. <laughs> Well, if this is interesting to you, we go out on a Thursday night where we lived in Worley. And because we were on the road at five in the morning, we'd have an early start and an early finish. Yep. But of course, that looks weird if you're in a pub and it's like 5.30. Because people are going, oh, on it. On goes, session. No, no, I'll be in bed by nine, mate. You know <laughs> what I mean? I have three pints, I'll be mangled because I've, <laughs> I've been up since five. But people take that slice of life. Yeah, I've had things like, I remember we went to, we were playing Leeds, I think we were. And we stayed at this... Hotel and it had the golf course next to it. So I said to the staff, bearing in mind you've got your whole Burnley outfit. Yeah, yeah. I said, we'll dive over for a couple of beers. And you know, people say the weirdest things. There's a golf, there's like a terrace and all these golfers there. And you know, there's always one who thinks they can have you off a yeah, little bit. Yeah, of course, yeah. So he goes, uh, he goes, oh, what are you doing here? Daichi sneaking out for a beer. I said, I don't need to sneak because I'm 48 years old. Yeah, I've got children. <laughs> and they forget, yeah, I'm like, Sneak, hey, sneaking out for a beer. Are you mad? Oh, yeah. Sneaking yeah. out for a beer. And like I'm not falls. playing tomorrow. Yeah, no, no, that's another thing. That's another weird thing. If you go, oh, you've got a game tomorrow, and I go, yeah, I'm 40 out in the manager. I think I can have four pints, you know, yeah. probably a lot more and still activate by sweet, three yeah. o'clock. Yeah, by three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> it's the maddest thing. <laughs> People take these little slithers of life and add these big stories to them over something dead simple. It's madness. We, we were in the hospital when you split your head open a few weeks ago. We split his head over. These standards, no seats in the emergency room. So Ben stood in the corner Head split open as a kid with filming him, and you're yeah, thinking, Oh, mate, no, come it's on, mad, isn't it? yeah, they're just anything as long as they can get that picture of that moment in so, time. Sometimes you can have a bit of fun with it. People come up to me in Nottingham, they go, What are you doing there? I go, I'll live it, and they just look at you, Oh, they don't know what to say, yeah. No, and it's the most bizarre thing. You're like, What did you think? I was just wandering around aimlessly, yeah, I know. You know what I mean, people go it's to places, <laughs> yeah, what are you doing yeah. there? Like, yeah, yeah, he's uh, world class at having people off as well. He's brutal, honestly. He's yeah. he's got that dead pan watching my soul cold. And he'll, somebody will say something, and then, like, you did it with Jamie a minute ago. So, Jamie was trying to set the cameras up, and he's saying, Dyche, are you going to sit like that? And he went, It's got to do with you. And Jamie just went bright red. <laughs> I did some Stoke Shit fans. I did some Stoke fans <laughs> yesterday afternoon. I was walking into West Bridgeford near where um, we live, and I was just walking down the road, going to meet. They have a legend sing in West Bridgeford, right? Where the old forest legends yeah. go. It's magnificent. Frank Clark, John Robertson, brilliant. They tell you stories and that. So, we sit and have a coffee and some lunch. So, I was walking down this, this lab, I went, all right, Daichi, uh, are you going to Stoke? I said, what's it got to do with this? I'm a Stoke fan. I went, oh, well, I'll tell you then. Yeah, all right, sweet. Yeah, I'll tell you inside. Off. And all his mates just piss us off. Does it annoy you when people call you Daichi that don't know you? Another weird thing. I think because I'm sort of a familiar type character, I get that all the time. People do this weird thing, right? You walk along like, and they say it extra loud, like you're going to stop and join in with their life. They go, oh, hey, uh, Sean Deitch. As if you're going to go, all right, mate, and what are you doing? Yeah, like let's go for a pint. Head down, wolf, just carry on. Um, it's just the oddest thing. Let's take it back to the man. So, Not so, so most people are good. So, so like I say, you're out of the work at the minute. What's it like then? So are you, is it, do, what do you have to do? Do you, do you sort of have to go to as many games as no, possible? No, well, not the minute, not the minute. I mean, we were touching on their general life. So you catch up with your kids, your, your life, yeah. your friends, stuff you've put off. You know, a lot of that happens. I mean, you know, random, I'll give, I'll give you an example of how it feels because it's a, it's a real thing. And I'm not name dropping. I, I, I did a charity golf day 
and it was with Chris Akabusi. Yeah. So I met him and he said, will you do my charity golf day? And I said, yeah, yeah, sure. And he said, come down, we'll have a game of golf at Woburn, right? So randomly, I was on, I was with Chambo, our mate, so he, he randomly rang me. I'm driving down the motorway to go to the house in Northampton because I moved, um, but we were getting rid of it and all that. Chambo said, you fancy nine holes at Woburn? So I see Chris Akabusi, right? So I said, oh, Chris, We'll get that game of golf in that I said to you last year. And he went, that was eight years ago. <laughs> eight years ago that I'd said, oh, we'll have a game of golf. And you suddenly go, where's that eight years gone? So then you imagine that times 50 of them moments, you know, your mates going, oh, yeah. let's go away next year. And then people, you know, from around the country, because I had a bit of a journeyman career, lived in uh, different places. You know, and then you go, you're promising all these, yeah, yeah, we'll do that, we'll do this, we'll do that. And all of a sudden you get time and you go, oh, yeah. right. So you just know, some simple stuff. You notice how kind of like, like I say, I haven't played football now for what, four, four five months since the end of last season. I've realised how unsociable football actually oh, is. Yeah, when you're in it, right. isn't it? Like you, yeah. you, you take it, you just take it as a given that Christmas and yeah. weekends and even Fridays, you're yeah. travelling, you're going to be somewhere, you're not going to be able to commit to something. It's so unsociable, yeah, isn't and, it? Yeah, and simple life stuff like that, you know, you're having a night and people go, oh, you've been out a lot lately. And you go, really? They go, yeah. how's that then? You go, well, you've been in there a lot. And you go, what, like once in six years? You know? <laughs> well, they had these little stories on, so it's just weird, all that. But a lot of normal stuff, some football stuff. Some of just like uh, Michael Duff, who's in at Barnsley. Yeah. I went up and said, look, do you want me to come and have a look at what you're doing? Just give you an opinion. Good guy, you know. And he said, yeah, great. A few phone calls, Joey Barton, people like catching up with them. Um, I live in Nottingham now, so I've been down the forest a couple yeah. of times. But not obsessively, not... You know, because you sort of need a break from it as well yeah. as, you know, to get your first real, really back for it. So I'm not, I've just been casually watching. People do, but another weird thing, popular music is ever, you know, people, well, you know this. People think like your whole, like, that's it, you just go and watch football all day. Yeah. Don't they? It's weird. Yeah. And you go, do. no, don't do that at all. So they ring you, oh, what did you think of that? What do you think? I said, I haven't even seen it. I haven't even no, seen it, no chance. Yeah, so it's that. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's another thing. I, I'm, I've really got a real appetite for what I do, but that doesn't mean that you watch every game at every level. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, just, you just watch a bit of my lad's play. So I've been to a few of the Northampton games and stuff like that. I mean, he's mainly sub, but, you know, go down in case he gets on and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, nice. So just some pretty normal stuff, really. You know what I mean? With, a few um, trips as well with the lads and stuff. With, with regards to sort of getting a new job as a manager, right? How how does it work where... So say, say for example, I don't know, whoever it was in the Premier League, somebody gets sacked, right? And it's kind of... And straight away, you're getting linked with that job, yeah? Do, is it a case of they literally just invite you to come and like that's the job the job's yours if you want it or is it like we've seen at Man United in the summer do you know like when there's the interview in these different managers and it's like tell us about your philosophy tell us about all that kind of stuff how does yeah. it work well it's changed a bit I mean you know I was in at Burnley for nine and a half years so back then I was out of Watford and then a few months out and I went through the whole real interview process so they did a proper process I think there was 12 11 or 12 did a first interview yeah then I got invited is it back Burnley for, yeah. yeah then okay. I got invited back for a second interview um, and then actually a, a sort of casual third one with my assistant, Ian Wone. Yeah. Um, and then I got the job. Different clubs do different things. Some will, will have targeted you, so therefore it's more like we all kind of are our person. So yeah. therefore we're probably going to take you. We just need to sound it out. Yeah. Some you do more casual style, you know. Um, I mean, I've, I've, I've obviously haven't been doing them, but this is what people tell me, you know. Someone... I mean, in my case, I did a PowerPoint presentation about what I thought. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. My, my opinion of what the club I thought was from the outside, yeah. um, what I could bring to it type thing. You know, I'm told some ask for that, some don't, some just like say, some because they're probably going to fancy you anyway, just want to chat with you. So in answer to your question, that can be very varied yeah. how that comes around. The, the first port of call is usually they come to you. You know, you don't go to them really. Yeah, you, sure. you might have an agent drop your name in, but they sort of know probably the short list they're thinking yeah, of. Yeah. And now and again, you do get the, you know, the sort of sidewinder where someone, you know, just takes you, you know, I've been told a younger manager who suddenly get a call out the blue, just almost like, oh, we've heard some stuff about this person. So let's go and have a chat with them. Probably I got a little bit about that. Cause don't forget, I'd only had one year at Watford. Yeah. So I was probably, I could, looking back, one of the maybes, you know, and then they thought. Did, did you get any? Um, did you get any mad ones when when you got sacked from Burnley? Did you get any mad sort of job offers? Because when I so end of season, I kind of left Watford free agent, not sure whether I'm going to retire, whatever. I got a few absolute bonkers ones, mate, all over the world. I'm talking. I got a Qatar one straight away. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I'd just come out and I was like, nothing gets working anywhere in the world. But you know, I thought, well, that's seven out of eight years in the Prem, yeah. so therefore I'd probably give it a window to see if a Prem club would want me first. Uh -huh. Just because it's a great league, you yeah, know, course, you know yourself, yeah. top league. And, you know, managers from all over will tell you, you know, they'll say it's still probably, arguably the best league. Yeah, you yeah, know, so true, therefore yeah. you think, well, 
after seven years of it, you give yourself a window to see if someone else goes, no, we'll, look, we'll have a look at you. You know what I mean? We fancy that. So I think I've got to give myself a healthy window. Yeah. I'm not against working outside of the Prem, whether abroad or the championship. Yeah. Or anything. Would I'm you not, do that, would you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not against any of that. I've never been, never really been a football snob. Obviously, I played outside of the Premier League. I played in the champ, the first and the second. So, you know, I never played a lot in the Premier League anyway. So I'm not adverse to working in different levels or anything like that. I, I just really like the challenge of what it is. But this, this many years later, though, obviously, you're in a very <laughs> different me. position from when, when you left Watford to then nearly you know knocking on a decade later your stock's different isn't it so like mm. you it's probably less likely you're going to be in for power points and stuff because you've got the reputation and you've got yeah, the stat standing that as a manager yang as well because don't forget it might get you in the door quicker because of what you do but on the other hand it might get you out the door because you go oh no he can only do this so you know it's yin and yang they the thing is with the media now you, you live in a box and there's no point in fighting to get you get out the box you just go all right you know because they endlessly just want to put you back in that box yeah of course you gotta remember the media work very sort of quickly so therefore once you're in that box it makes easy writing easy to report on Sean Dyche does this yeah like, simple end the story. yeah because yeah. yeah. it was simple but borderline on easy so they just go right uh, Burnley did this yeah they love you no, though the media do they always yeah, absolutely love you like yeah, say almost yeah. to the, like a cult following kind of thing do you know what I mean yeah I don't know I mean I just try to be pretty genuine well yeah. you've known me a while yeah. and you pretty I think you pretty much know straight that I to am. the point mate yeah no but no I've always been like that yeah you've known me. I think that's through Chamber and that but that's I mean? not that's not only like your your uh, your personality is what you are as a bloke but I think that is your management style so I've got written down here like you're basically is, is that is that make it easier to be a manager and implement that as your style when that's your personality anyway? Because I can imagine, like I've never played for you, but I could imagine that you basically would every day or whenever, or if you sign for a new club, you'll go, right lads, this is how it's going to work, right? It's black and it's white and it's simple. There's no grey area. Don't mess about. Don't be dickheads. Do it properly. We'll all get on well. Yeah, something like that. I mean, there's a bit more to it, but yeah, basically the, 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 the culture has got to be right, yeah. I think. You know, and I, I think... You know, I had four promotions as a player, albeit outside the Prem, but I had four. And I knew, or every time I thought, yeah, it's right. Here. Yeah, yeah. And so I reflected on that. What do you need to get promoted or, or achieve, whichever way you look at it? Well, you definitely need a core. You need, I think, you need a culture and a core that is really important. Mm -hmm. To get that, you need a good environment. I think I have a laugh as well. You know, yeah, I mean? yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty close with the players. There's none of that sort of boundary. I don't stand up there and you can't talk to me or touch me. You know what I mean? I don't do that. Um, they know where the line is. I'm pretty sure of that. And then you kind of build something that works. I mean, forget that. You know, everyone go for, you know, the favourite one, we, we all laugh at it, all the, all the managers laugh at it. So some manager you've never heard of will come into the Premier League or the Championship, they go, oh, you know, fans outside the stadium, was, oh, a, a great tactician. You're like, hey, I don't even know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that How come you from? know? Yeah, where's this great tactician come from? Because the media's told you so. Yeah, we, we just yeah, laugh. Yeah, we yeah. just sit there laughing. You know what I mean? But yeah. with the culture, uh, Sean, it's... <laughs> Like look at like yourself over the years, and just as a, a kind of generic football fan, you look at it and say it's no coincidence that managers like yourself and Eddie Howe, been in the Premier League for a very very long time, got a a British kind of core of lads, culture, and if you're playing in the English game, obviously you're going to look at foreign players if they're good enough, but that surely goes a very very long way having that British core yeah, of the lads. Spine, I think the spine's important. But it's another thing, you know. I've had the popular. Ah, oh, look at how fucking that. embarrassingly. Well, look at fucking... that. Well, by the way, it's a fine. You know that's a fine. Have you got your phone on? We Sorry, don't. Have your phone on. It's all about. It. So that's a fine. That's a fine. Straight if this, if away. I, if fine this in a meeting. Your... I know. I mean, you're getting ruined. Simple as that. If phone goes off in a meeting and it's my <laughs> meeting. You're getting ruined. Massive problem. What would that fine have been at Burnley? Where no, we didn't do. You know, must have heard we do a wheel like spin yeah, wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could be anything on the spin wheel. It could be what, what, like what then? Oh, it's a lap dance. You no, spin for... come on. Yeah, lap dance. We, you, so you lap dance. Is there fines in there? Is actual money fines in there? Oh yeah, yeah. Some get some. You get it back. Some will be like. You get times two spins back and all that. That was a fair wheel. <laughs> We're so, out for so, dinner next week, mate, after that. So, so hold on a minute. So this wheel, right? So I've heard about the wheel before, okay? So who who actually has to sort of like spin the wheel and ad adhere right, to so, whatever the fine is? So quick story for you, because loads of people nicked this idea yeah. um, from us and then sold it as their own. But we actually nicked it in the first place. Yeah. I, I, I never I never nick other people's work. I tell them where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. And it came from rugby. We heard Mark Howard, who was my sports scientist with us at Burnley, great operator, we were trying to get a new feel in that, you know, because lads gone a bit sloppy. Christmas, you know, the old favourite. Before Christmas, fines, yeah, fines, yeah, fines. Yeah. After the Christmas, do not Out find each other. And we're trying to, you know, keep a tight rein on it. I'm all about simple stuff, by the way, not the big stuff. If you if you're now life training, you, you know, I'm going to you're going to come and see me. Yeah, I like the little stuff. 
shoddiness, you know, t- you know, kit lying around, you know, the usual footballer yeah, stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? So how he said, uh, I've heard about this wheel. So we think, right, and it's got like fines on it. So we were like, okay, let's play around with it. So we had numbers on it, which was your squad numbers, obviously, and then letters. So whatever the letter landed on would be a fine of some description. <laughs> so some were personal fines like, you know, uh, sit in the river. There was a river next to the train. I sit in the river for a minute. Um, that's that ain't fun. Trust me, it's October <laughs> and the river's freezing. Um, we had dance off. We had sing off. Uh, we had boy band. So that was oh. brilliant. The boy band was brilliant because if you got fined, you have to spin three times for two of the people to join oh. you. Oh, oh it's okay. brutal. Blood. So people are dying. People are going. Oh no, no, you know, because they're cringing. <laughs> um, stuff like that. But then there'd be. Uh, 150 there'd be the, I think the biggest one it wasn't crazy to be fair Ben and you know because the lads are doing alright yeah, you know? yeah. I think it was 350 yeah. but bearing in mind if you've just left like a cup on the table You're in and you get done 350 that's oh, going to hurt you for yeah, leaving a cup on the yeah. table that's going to hurt you know what I mean I think basically then everybody is just praying that it's like a dance off or it's like a sing off or something like that no no because they're, no, they're desperate to not get that and you're thinking oh no because you'll pay the fine for money no no, no that's what I'm saying but oh, yeah, everybody yeah. else oh no everyone everybody else, else sorry watching, yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah they're desperate yeah. I mean I can't see you, but I, I saw the, the, the funniest lap dance ever <laughs> so, cause, so one of the lads has to do a lap dance on the other lad you, know, oh. you have to spin for the second one. Oh, the, the best ever, funniest ever when you thought, you, you must do this at home, man. You know, you're like Gene. Not that I've ever been to a lap dance. Of course. Really made that clear. I've heard stories from Ben. But the, no, the idea is we were like properly howling. I mean, howling. And some of the times, like, I remember Stephen DeFore, obviously Belgian international, he comes in, he loved it. You know, you'd think, you know, you hear these, oh no, you know, because he's an international and he wouldn't, he absolutely Buzzing for it. Oh, loved it. Beyond belief, <laughs> loved it. Sit there crying laughter, like it was like the best invention in the world. He's the guy know. wheeling it out every time. Yeah. So when do you do this? On a Friday? Yeah, so Friday before the team meeting, you know, change of feel. Yeah, it, yeah. it originally came around, it was a win-win, right? So find them to keep things, you know, a bit, a bit of culture and a bit of, you know, keep things right. But then equally what you found was you sort of stripping egos back because people at first are cringy. Yeah, yeah. And then they, it's like suddenly, you know, that weird thing when you go, actually, these cats are laughing with me, yeah. not at me, yeah. they're with me. And then it changes the feel. Yeah, yeah. So we started doing that because some lads, you know, dancing in front of the group, you know, it's like people dying. Oh, God. Dying. It's so, it's, some hilarious oh. dance where people just cannot dance. But they're nervous as well. Like yeah. the sing off, like when you get a new then, fan, you have to do the sing off. Like, oh. like, I, I, I can have a bit of fun, but I'm not good at jokes. And there was things like, I can tell three jokes. But you know, people, some people just can't tell Freeze a joke. Up. Yeah. Absolutely frozen, solid. And then some were fines there for money and all that. So yeah, again, to build a culture, this was part of it. Yeah. And then that's that can get misconstrued. You know, it's like our oh, dinosaur Deitch, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. like no. as a spin wheel and he thinks that's gonna win a game. And you go, no, it's no, nothing no. to do with that. It's to do with getting a group of people to all align, strip back their egos and go, We're all in it together. Yeah. And yeah. what about what about new signings? Is it, did you ever have any sort of set initiations or anything like that? Yeah, just a sing, you know. Is it the same? Yeah, it's yeah. always a sing. Staff as well. Staff yeah, had a sing. nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen, I, I've seen some players properly melt with that as well. Oh, you have for People sure, have mate. Oh, it's disgusting. Like. Well, you can't win. You either got to sing in a way where you sing your art out, good or bad. You have a good singer, or you get laughed yeah. at, or you do that weird thing when you sort of do that embarrassed singing, and then the lads are caning you. <laughs> Absolutely ruining you. It's so mad, you isn't win. it? With tubes on, and um, you know, it's in his golf channel when he, he is as golf channel, and he says that every guest that he gets on, they take their first tee shot, and he says they are absolutely shitting themselves. Yeah. And he yeah. said they're having a game of golf with him, but he said they are absolutely. <laughs> no, I do, shitting I do that. Themselves. I do that. Steve Stone, a good friend of mine, proper golfer. I said, Stoney, I can't play in all them things because I just get too nervous. And he went, he said, Do you never think to yourself I'm playing in front of seventy thousand people? Yeah. So why am I bothered about two? And yeah. I went, No. He said, I can't. I said, I just can't do it. I just um, want to play Talking about golf there quickly, I've, um, our, our mutual friend, Alec Chamberlain, texted me earlier and said, um, you've got one story that you're going to be able to tell. Is there's, there's a couple of naughty stories that you definitely can't tell. Um, nothing bad, obviously, obviously. But um, obviously. one of them was um, you were playing somewhere in Scotland and you've teed off. You've, you've teed off we in were. front of the markers so, and the lads aren't happy with oh, it. Oh, it was hilarious. So Chambo's proper anal out yeah, you know, about, yeah, yeah. about his golf. I mean, he's mad for it. And he, he, he's so mad for it. Like, and I just play golf for fun, right? I compete at everything. So golf for me, I don't compete. It's just pure fun. You know, I'm not pretty handy when I'm going. I've had two back hops over the last few, four years. So I'm, a bit, I'm not so good at the minute. But around about 10, you know, got down to yeah, eight, eight, eight yeah. to 10. Yeah. Yeah. And um, 
And Joe Moses is really steady goal, but he plays every round like he's got to play to his handicap. Yeah. And it bores me to death. You know, he's going, oh, well, you know, I think I'll hit this. I'm going, get the driver and just, just crack it. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what he's like. So. He ain't cracking it, mate. He's no, 150 no, yeah, yards yeah, on the yeah, driver. Yeah. He's, he's in like your fairway would off, a, you know, instead of a seven, like, just to try and get it to <laughs> score. You know what I'm going? <laughs> I'm hitting the wedge thinking I'm like a pro, you know what I mean? Like smashing the life out of it. He's playing all these dead anyway. So we're in Ma Hall it was. So Mal, Big Malks had sorted us out to go up there and he couldn't make it. But he said, look, you go up. So his mate Moon was there, who's not a footballer, but knows Malks. So he sort of gets the feel of four. So we're blaming Chamber, right? So I'm, I'm setting up and I'm literally going to hit it. So Chamber goes, oh, I go, oh, what? And he goes, you're not, you're not going to hit that. On you the know? first hole? No, no, this is all about the fourth okay, hole. Yeah. And I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, your ball's in front of the tee. Oh, it was like, on. I swear, it was like an inch in front of the, you know, the yellow mark. I went, are you? F-? I said, you've got to be fucking kidding me. And so Moon, Malcolm's mate, is going, because he do not know where I'm on it off. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm yeah, blowing yeah, off yeah. or I'm just funny blowing off, you know, because I'm having it. I'm going, are you fucking kidding me? I'm going, it's like the roll's 407 yards and I'm one inch in front of the mark. It ain't a thing. But that's how I was like, well, no, you've got to play to the rules. I went, are you, are you serious? And so Moon now is, well, he doesn't know whether to laugh or he wonders whether we're having a proper row, you know what I mean? But it's kind of one of them funny rows where you, you are rowing. Yeah, yeah. Like, are you, you, you've got to be kidding Stop me. being pathetic, Jambo. Yeah. We're not yeah. on the PGA yeah. Tour, Stop right? Yeah, exactly yeah. that. So, yeah, I mean, just stuff like that. You know, silly stuff with your mates, but... No, that was, you sort of had to be there, but it was still hilarious. I, I mean, love this. With, with the culture, we talked about the culture earlier on, so... Um, Obviously, me and Fozzie spend a lot of time together and I know he gets phone calls and it's really interesting for me over the last few years to get real insight as to how football really works. But when you sign a player, obviously there's the football ability. What about the rest of it, them as a person? And Yeah, you, I mean, the, the big thing, misconception about foreign players that we had was, you know, like you don't like foreign players, absolute nonsense, couldn't care like most managers where they're from as long as they're good. Um, we, we just didn't really have the financial backing to go into that market because if yeah. you get that wrong... Um, not just as a player culturally, you know, their families can't settle, stuff like that. And the board at Burnley at the time wanted sort of safe bets. So you tend to go for people you know a lot about. Yeah. And in the UK gang, because I was a, obviously I played for 20 years and I was coaching straight away with under 18s there, I couldn't find out, like, I, just, I knew a couple of the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the education um, uh, people in, in football. So I could ring about what their attitude was like at uh, college. Yeah, and you know what yeah. I mean? So you start learning about them as a character, you know, what they're like yeah. and who they are. Of course, the youth team coaches as well. You'd, you know, I knew a few of them. You'd ring, go, oh, do you remember so and so? And they go, yeah, good lad, works hard, blah blah. So you just, you just get a bigger background, and then you get these weird things like the media used to love that when they go, um, oh yeah, but you, you love players with a good attitude. And I used to go, who doesn't want players with a good attitude? I said, where's that come from? I know. What kind of question is that? I, so I honestly, I, I think... know a manager. They might get a few terrorized, but they don't mean it. They, they hope they've got a great attitude. You know I, what I mean? think, I think honestly, I, I, random I, things. I, like I said, we've been in football a long time, and. One of the one of the biggest qualities you can have is being like a team player, isn't it? Just oh, like being able to play in a team and especially be, as a manager, I'd just care. do it right. Of course, big enough a as a player, you yeah. still want lads around you you can rely on. But as a manager, you definitely want that. Yeah. So that was a given. Um, but you still got to manage that. You know the obvious one I always say, and because they was going, oh, and they'll go. By the way, then, so how would you consider Joey Barton? Now, mm. as it happens, fantastic. By the way, yeah, was he? Yeah. But what I'm saying is, from the outside, yeah, they're not course. thinking that. The media are they? They're thinking, Phew. but he was. Was he Abs- tough? Yeah, fantastic, great lad as well. Fantastic. I saw him at the Marseille Tottenham match the other night, giving two fingers to the Marseille fans. Oh, the Tottenham fans! <laughs> oh, he's, Joey's Joey. Joey's Joey. <laughs> the character, isn't he? They, def- they definitely broke the box oh, with God, him. Man. But we got him great. We got him um, great. I want to talk about um, one of the players at Burnley that you've managed for a long, long time. Um, the goalkeeper. So, first of all, in my head as a goalkeeper, I haven't played the game. A lot of managers. A goalie haters, yeah. <laughs> They're just like stop the ball going yeah, in the back of the net. If I was a right? centre half, don't forget. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. I, I love me goalies. Yeah, so you would, yeah. you, you'll, you'll appreciate a good goalie. Mm. Somebody that does it right. Somebody that stops the ball going in the back of the net. Sweet as a nut. The goalie that you had at Burnley for a long, long time, Nick Pope, right? Yep. So one of my favourite goalies that I've ever sort of played against, whatever, just for the pure fact of he is what he is. He stops the ball going in the back of the net. Yeah, and I think people yeah, I underappreciate him so much. Don't I they? agree. I agree. Um, we bought him had, had amazing success with goalkeepers. Um, I bought Tommy and then yeah. he'd just been relegated Oof, at Bristol City. What a goalie. Yeah, oh. clean, one of the cleanest sets. What a guy as well. So you know, yeah, yeah, great lad. I got slaughtered for that. It's my first ever signing really? at Burnley. I got slaughtered for it. And the reason was that I was going to bring him in at Watford. Literally the day before, well, I got tipped off I was going to get the tin sack. 
But I met him the day before. I still had to do my work properly. And they pulled it. They wouldn't sign him. But I said to his agent, I said, I'll be back. I said, whatever happens, I'll be back. And I thought, a bit of loyalty. So I signed him. Um, we lost Lee Grant, great lad as well. Yeah, done yeah. Brilliant for us. We, we lost him. And I think he went off to Derby. Signed Tom on a free. Just got relegated off Bristol City. So I got Kane for that one. The point to that story is that then we had the similar scenario with Popey. Popey got relegated at Charlton. Yeah. Then people are going, oh, but they're sort of going, well, look at what's happened with Tom Eaton. So the reason for that, and this will make sense to your thing, Ben, maybe people who are listening, but if you think about it, if you're still old and you're nervous and you're old and you end up as a goal and you're getting relegated and you're getting, right, if you're getting relegated, you're going to get lots of goals. Yeah, sure, but Tom, yeah. I, I remember seeing him in games and um, some of the analysis, and he was still working with his defenders, at route, you know, trying to get a reaction. He's diving all over the place. And I thought, he's, he's still at it. He hasn't sacked it off, he's yeah. at it. And Popey was the same. He just had that manner about him, you know, John got relegated, conceded loads of goals, but he was at it. He's flinging himself everywhere. And you, you almost think that weird thing when you go, they should have got done seven. Yeah. And they've only got done two because yeah. of him. Anyway, came in, really good learner, worked with Billy Mercer, another top operator, yeah, Billy. Yeah, yeah. And you could smell it on him. And you just thought, wow, he's starting making big saves. At first, you know, maybe not. I call it saving the unsavables. Yeah. You know, and I said, go for everything because don't be surprised when you save it. It's my biggest thing about yeah, keeping. Yeah, I love that, yeah. And I couldn't quite get him to get that mentality. And then all of a sudden you saw him break through and you thought, no, he's, look at him. He's, he's got it now. Say, well, he's going for everything yeah. here. Big, big fella anyway, you know, but he's he's fast. He's really fast yeah. with his arms, you know what I mean? Stands up forever. He's you know, massive. It's a massive quality. He's so big. Goal. He's just to stand yeah. up. Because goalies go down quick. Mm. Tom was good at it as well, to yeah, be fair yeah. to him. You know, the bigger you stand up, the longer you stand up for, you put doubt in the opposition, you put doubt in the centre forward or whatever, as you know. Brilliant at that. You know, just stand up forever. You can see the centre forward thinking, yeah. go on, make my decision for me. <laughs> Please. And he wouldn't, you know what I mean? But I must say, he, uh, when he was working with Tom and Joe Hart, by the way. Yeah, of course, yeah. Joe's took some heat, but I tell you, fantastic operator for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. His manner was excellent. In the end, he's, he was in an unfortunate position, just to give you a little life story about keepers. He was playing great for us, you know, but we were struggling like yeah. mad. And the only thing I hadn't changed was the keeper. I remember, I remember. And I said it, yeah. to him, I said, yeah. Joe, look, you ain't going to like this, but you're the only thing I haven't changed. Yeah. And he was raging, obviously, rightly so. But I went, Joe, it's my job. This is my job. Yeah. It's to make decisions. I remember you put on Tom Eaton and yeah, then and you went and won Tom the next few know, straight know, afterwards. Know, it's like, oh. I know, and Joe's probably like, oh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> but a great operator. So you got them three cats, right? That's mm. a good three. That's a big good three. That's a serious and department. And Heats used to love it. Well, Wony, because Wony's got a bit of acid. Wony used to shout over, who's the little guy in the middle? Oh, that's so... No, <laughs> you know, he can't do that. He used to hate it. Oh, <laughs> that's horrible. I never used to say it. It was Wony. You got, you got Nick Pope, who's six foot seven. Right? Yeah. He's, up, he's the longest man in the world. Yeah, Even is. Hart, he's six foot three, four. Like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, probably. But he's got that big, long neck on him. and that's Big, long neck. Big back, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so he's like six foot. And yeah. then you've got Heats in the middle at like six foot. And we hear Wony say, who's your little brother? Oh, it, it black, kills, you know? mate. It hurts. Yeah, so, yeah. Do you remember back in the day, Richard Lee? Poor Richard oh, Lee. Yeah, we used to give it to mate, him. Mate, yeah. I remember like back at Watford, right back in the day, Richard Lee was again like... Uh, former goalkeeper foot? Six foot. I don't think he's that right. yeah, that's for a five I'll do him a favour and say no six chance foot. mate Rich we love Rich the bits but um, yeah like I, I remember like back in the day Daichi would walk in the room right, and no joke Richard Lee would be sat there eating his dinner he would see Daichi and he would just <laughs> go mate <laughs> he's gone he would leave honestly it was horrible was a, bit, was a bit lively as a player it's <laughs> yeah that's what it was wasn't it so I think you, you, yeah you could see that bit of Richard bit of heat, so you got to just bring him down a peg or he's two don't lad, you though, Rich. yeah he is a good lad. lad but I did used to give him some <laughs> how horrible it was um, Nick I've got a question to ask about Nick, Nick Pope as well then so um, one of one of Nick's biggest qualities for me is which just gets is again super underappreciated is his ability to come out for crosses for oh, balls into the box right was it was it a plan at, uh, at Burnley especially to when when you had a, when you were facing a corner was it the plan for him to stand on the six yard box because that's what he did he would literally stand there and no, sometimes think, he would just put his arms yeah, up in the air and catch it. Just mature into it, you know. Really, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing I'd say about Popey to give you a sort of coaching backstory is I remember to see he's getting a bit frustrated. And I said, Popey, look, just trust us. Yeah. You are moving forward. I'm telling you, I see it in training. Billy sees it. The other keeps it. Everyone sees it. Because he wasn't playing, sometimes he wasn't even sub. Because yeah. we had Joe, Joe yeah, and uh, remember, yeah, yeah. And I said, J just bear with it, just trust me. And he did. Fair play to him. Now, Taki was the same. Taki had to sit there behind Ben, me, and Kino yeah. for, for a year and a half. Wow. But I said, Taki, trust me, you are improving. I'm, I'm telling you, yeah. I promise you, you're improving. It's hard and for a player to hear that, though, know, isn't it? You know, just, you just want to be there doing Tarky it. Taki was reacting quicker in training, he's blocking things. It, all the ugly stuff that I love about defending, he was getting better and better at. Yeah. So, no surprise when them cats go in and they do it. 
they just do it. Yeah. Like, like Pope went in and he never looked back. I oh, didn't, did and, he? You know, and I love it. He's done his shoulder. I think, yeah, it was his shoulder. And Pope went in and was just poof, hit the ground so, runner. In answer to your question, you know yourself. You coach some. And then you mature. He's maturing as a player. He's actually growing in in not growing, but in confidence. Yeah. You know? So now he's coming for them crosses, and we're not saying you must come for it. He's like making big decisions really early. That's so brave. Oh, that. Yeah, that is yeah, so yeah. brave to be able to stand. Honestly, I've watched him do it. He's, he'll stand on the like just yeah. inside the six yard. But I'm thinking you're mad. Like if you drop it there, it's a goal. Yeah, you know yeah. that. Yeah, you it's do a goal. Though, he's a monster. As Mate, well. he is a monster. You know, when sometimes. you stand with him and you just think you are. Enormous. Mate, He's I, like bas- basketball we, star. We did, I did. A, I did something the other week, and I said. I said on people gave me pouters in the comments. I said Nick Pope's about six foot seven. You know, he's about, he's the longest goalie no, out there. Is, yeah, on Wikipedia, they've six, listed six him as six or three or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And people are killing me. Going, just his he's, arms. he's six foot three, and I'm thinking he's not. He's about that much taller than Fuzzy, me. He's no, massive. It's funny because you replied to one of the comments and said. How big was he when you stood next to him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Didn't you? Um, he's doing the duck under the door when he walks in and all that. Mate, he you know, is absolutely wow. massive. Isn't I mean, him, and, him and Tom between them, I mean, two terrific operators. Yeah. Two terrific lads. Well. They are, and they? when he went to Newcastle, I think it was at 10 million. And sometimes oh, these sh- transfers sh- go under the window. I mean, wow. we always talk I mean, about it, Craig I think, Dawson. I think, but... to be fair, forget about it. I think he had a year left, I seem to. Yeah. Remember. So obviously, if he had a few years left, I'm sure it would be more. But um, it's he's a steal. Still. I think he's done well from what I gather. Um, I read a few of the points. Stone is up there, Steve yeah, Stone, yeah. and he's been to some of the games. You know, he's done great. Oh, he's just been nominated for Player of the Month as well. Oh, there you he? go. So then, yeah, there I mean, you go. Says it all, but he's he's a top performer. But Tom Tom was a top performer as well. So and you you mentioned Sean with um, obviously with a bit of time off, you've been watching games and um, helping out pals and, and stuff like that. Are there any sports that you've kind of other sports that you've taken inspiration? Do you know, from? What? I had I had a, I had a Carlsberg weekend where straight after the the fellow uh, fellow called Jim who's um, sort of built and, and runs uh, leaders in sport. I've done some talks for him and he's amazing. Um, Jimmy Rally, he, he links you in with stuff. So I'm sitting, I'm sitting at my mate's 40th in Dublin and a lad called Richie Sadler I used to play with at Millwall who would have been a top player but finished her injury, but great lad. So we were having lunch. I get this message through, right? I swear this is how your life does change because you, you never normally got time and now yeah. you have got time. I literally get a WhatsApp. Hey Dodge from Jimmy. Hey Dodge, you just wondered, do you fancy doing Champions League? And then we're flying down with, um, a couple of people, I won't name names, but a couple of people, private jet down to watch the Monaco Grand Prix. Oh, so I'm yes. reading this out to Richie Sadler, right? So I'm reading, I'm having lunch. I went, so he goes, so I, I go, like you do, you know, Ben, you got your kids. And I go, yeah, just got to check with the family. And Rich Sadler went, there's no checking with the family. I say, yes. So given. you just kept it capital letters. You just put yes, that's it. And you know, and you go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I mean, that, that's been coming along for a number of years now, but you can't do it. You never yeah, got time course, to do it. Yeah. So amazing. So in answer to your question about other sports, golf would be a main one. I do like golf, and I've been fortunate to speak to a few golfers, watch some good golf and all that. Um, the Monaco Grand Prix, I'm not, I'm not crazy about motor racing per se, but elite anything I watch. I love watching elite performers. Yeah, yeah. I think it's brilliant. Um, music's a big one for me, so I, I'm massively into that. Um, I'm, I'm not sort of, a, what's the word, I'm not precious about it. I watch all different kinds of music. I just like watching performers. Um, yeah, back to the sport. General stuff, you know. I went to Wimbledon on an invite. I'm, I'm not mad into tennis, but I, you know, I like it enough to go along and enjoy it. And so, yeah, rugby. I know I don't know anything about rugby, but I've done a few talks with the rugby mm. guys. So, seen a bit of rugby. And Eddie Jones, amazing fella. He's, you know, I've been to a couple of England games that he's invited me to and spoke with them and all that sort of stuff. So, I've been still been doing a bit of that, um, podcasts and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But on the sports scene, not not so much. A bit of football, but not like I say, not obsessively going everywhere. That'll come again, but at the minute, just... Well, I think on think. behalf of um, not only myself, but I think most of the, the Premier League fans out there, mate, don't get too comfy in this, all right? Because we need to see you back in the Premier League soon. Sort do, of you know, do you know what is weird? I don't mind saying to you, because it, it, it's the truth, but you know what? People come up to me and they go, do you know what, Dodge? We just miss seeing your yeah. interviews. And I Honestly. Go, Why? And they, they just go, yeah. just because, you know, you just always just call it or have a bit of fun and all that. And I was like, hmm. I was like... I was like, it'd be a bit no. better if you missed the football. It's the interviewers, it's true, though, Sean. Hey, it it's is. the interviewers because I sometimes you see like um, maybe foreign coaches come over and the reporters lead with a question or something. But the, I always sometimes think the coaches and managers give them an opportunity to start kind of weaseling around. And I always think with yours, you, you don't give them the opportunity. Yeah. It's like they know going into it, they can't ask shit questions. No, the thing is that you, when you do it a long time, you do a lot, you know, as well. Even Burnley, right? I mean, I must say, you know, Pep and all them guys, they're doing like double me. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So sometimes when you sit in the go, you know, apparently they only give them 15 minutes. It's because they could be there for three hours. For me, 
most were pretty good with us, you know. They're pretty real. We, we got a bit of heat now and again, but most were pretty good. So I thought, well, if they're good with me, I'm going to give them the time back. And you you got to remember, eight, uh, nine and a half years, some of these guys have known for a long time. Yeah, so yeah. you build up a bit of rapport. So they know now you can have a bit of fun with them. They can ask a bit of fun questions. Sometimes they get it wrong and I get it wrong, but usually, and, it, and it's, I always think if you're authentic, right, people, they can smell it. Yeah, of course yeah. they can. So yeah. people meet me, they always go, oh, you're how oh, I imagine. And I go, yeah, that's because I was being how yeah, that's yeah. me, yeah. I mean, mates back home, they wouldn't let me live with it anyway. No my chance. mates have ruined me. Yeah, it's going, would, well, yeah. Oh my word, what are you doing? Stop giving so, it the big yeah, yeah, so you're on TV, who was that? They go, that ain't you, you know what I mean? So that's Cardigan, it, like, Pat oh, Cardigan or something oh, like that's that. It, yeah. I'd get ruined. My mates yeah. would ruin me, and for that alone, it ain't worth it. You know what I mean? No I chance, it. mate. Scotty Parker, that's what the one was he wearing, that Tom Brown top or something, expensive jumper. It was like five, six hundred quid. Or oh, come on, have well, a day I'm not off, knocking would you? anyone, they could do what they want, but for me, I just thought, nah, my mates would ruin me, so that always keeps me. At the back of my mind, I think, am I going to get away with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but I will say to you, though, just quickly on this subject, and I say this to younger managers when they ring me for advice, and I go, you have, unfortunately, the way the media world is now, you've got to sort of drop enough in for yeah. your new buzzwords and that, or else you're sort of seen as not relevant. Really? So, oh, yeah, yeah. So I say, look, just be, you know, I, I probably get away with it because people know me now. But, you know, you've got to, you know, the modern coach, you know, you're going to come out with these buzzwords and phrases and you've almost got to sound like you're a bit pseudo-intellect. Really, so that, yeah. yeah. So that the media grip hold of you, because if not, they'd just be like, oh. Uh, there you've got to protect, like yeah you've got to say stuff to make them think oh he's ahead of the track like he knows what he's talking about here when in well, real I, I, honesty for banter, for banter I'd throw in stuff like I'd agree with the stuff so I, I once said um, they said really good performance I said yeah I'm bereft of superlatives <laughs> <laughs> it's all pre-planned so the staff are in the office wetting themselves because this comes up so when I do the media it comes up within about an hour you've got to get screen. bereft in there you've got oh, to yeah, get yeah. it in there so somewhere I just, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'll yeah. just throw in sometimes for a bit of fun you know what I mean and we just come out with or we I deliberately use modern terms so I, I go, love so that the lads will be buzzing yeah, about, go, yeah. yeah we, we recycled the ball really well today and we played some linear passes you know and all that and the lads will be buzzing and we go <laughs> look at him love that I, mean? so I we, bet we you'll be watching telly going lads what, what, watch this and we're, oh, yeah, we, had, we had one of the coaches I went to they they called it they called a long ball a vertical pass. Oh so I come on! Yeah yeah Piss no. Off. So I went I went yeah yeah we've been we're working on vertical passes. Oh, so the lads are buzzing. Shit. The lads in the office are buzzing. All the staff and that. My you know what God. I mean? so. Um, right, I've, we've got some kind of like quick fire questions for you, right? It's okay. not like, they're not like obviously sort of one answer. If you please, if you don't, could not do that, that'd be brilliant. That'd be amazing. <laughs> monosyllabic, man. Monosyllabic. Yeah. Monosyllabic. monosyllabic. Yeah. monosyllabic. Got that wow. one a few times, yeah. What the hell is wow. Me. So we're going to start with some sort of like manager specific questions, okay? okay? Um, Sean Dyche, who is the best player you've ever managed? Ability wise, just pure do you know, ability. Do you know the one? Do you know the one? Who I thought would would have had a little period, but would have been fantastic. It was Steve Defoe. I knew you was going to say Steve Defoe. I so knew what, it. What a good player, mate! And he had a window when he was fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, really like Premier League fix. When he came over, he wasn't, and he knew that after a yeah. few months. He got Premier League fit, and it's so unfortunate for him and us. He got a bad injury. Bad injuries, yeah. He was flying, yeah. and I remember thinking he could see things differently. And you, you know, you think you're a top player. No wonder you're Belgian, Belgian. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. he caps me. But you know, you go, yeah, you can see it. And when he got really fit and understood what we were about, oh, he, he added so much. Knew, do you know? I was going to knew you was going to say that because we played against you when he was fit and he was good to go. <laughs> and then we also played against him when he was he, he must have had an injury or coming back or yeah. just before and he looked a little bit overweight he looked a little bit sluggish off the pace kind of thing yeah. but in his pomp when he was playing that or, day I remember everybody coming off the pitch going wow. Yeah, he had a window of about three months when he's fit and leaning on it. Yeah. When he, his, 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 his brain had changed that much I swear to you. He carried on playing right and he literally had got to the point he sort of hardened up a bit. He, yeah. he was like, God, I've got this funny feeling in my knee. And it turns out to be a lump of cartilage ah. had broken off. And he, but he was just going, oh, just a bit of a funny feeling, you know, because he was so on it. He was just like buzzing. Momentum buzzing. does yeah, 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 buzzing, it, yeah. confident. But yeah, for, for a player you look at, you just go, you know, what a player. Yeah. Effective players different. Like Joey was brilliant for really, us, yeah. coming at perfect time, you know. Andre for that season particularly. Oh yeah, you know, to get us, machine, yeah, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, there are some effective players as well, but just as a pure class, you go Stephen, Stephen Defoe. Yeah, when you thought, yeah, what a player. Love that. Um, Favorite away stadium to play at, whether it be because you always got good results there or just yeah, the surroundings. Bit of both, I think, because of when you're growing up as a younger younger player. But I was playing professionally is, is Old Trafford. Yeah, I wasn't a Man U fan, but. The, the the feel of it, you know, the, the the history of it, the and we did have good results. Yeah, there. you did, didn't you? Um, you know, night games there and all that. Cool, you know, as yeah. a manager, you're walking out, you're just going, Pfft. specialist. 
proper, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some of the modern stadiums are amazing. I must say Tottenham's new stadium is amazing. Yeah, is Got battered there, unfortunately. <laughs> but amazing stadium. But Old Trafford, just the whole feel of it, you yeah, know what I mean? So, it is, yeah. yeah, loving that. Loving um, that. I love that. Who is... And this is, you might have to rack your brain a little bit for this. Anfield but as well, boy. Yeah, when it's rocking, oh, when it's, rocking it's, pop, yeah, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the player who has been the worst trainer, but then on a match day, you knew you could just rely on. Without a shadow of a doubt, when I was playing this, is unfortunate though, but I've got yeah. to answer, Hyde Elgson. Really, yeah. Oh, Big old Hyder. Turgid. <laughs> I mean, you just go, oh, no, we've got Hyder. Turgid. Really? Oh, <laughs> we give him a stick about it all the time. All the time we go, and he, he, he needs to look at it and go, I oh, know. Because you'd be like, oh, no, we've got Hyder. We're going to struggle today. Yeah. It's amazing because you, you want said... Danny Webber in small-sided football back then. <laughs> Webber's just going to win you your small-sided games. Hyder's going to lose you. But come a game time, poof, you'd have Hyder on your team sheet every time. He and was one of player. them. You said oh, big, hi big Hyder. He wasn't big, was he? Oh, he's an animal. He, he could jump, couldn't he? Cool. Yeah, he could. He was a tough. sicko. He'd put his head anywhere. Oh, tough Horrible, as, wasn't tough he? Tough as teak, I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, and top man as well. Brilliant. You don't, they don't make so, many yeah, like no, Hyder Halgerson anymore, do they? No, they don't what, make many what like What an that. underrated player. Another really, really good player. Yeah, love uh, that. But yeah, train, train. Um, best One of the best trainers I played for as well, Timmy Cale. Yeah? Timmy Cale, top. Top uh, player. Training, professional, top, player. top pro, all Just that. Top, yeah, yeah, again, you know you get small side of games, you go, please get, please get Timmy on yeah, that yeah. team. You got Timmy, you're going to win. Nice. Similar as that. Love but as that. a manager, sorry, uh, your question about uh, worst trainer, best players. That was it, wasn't yeah, it? Best yeah, best on a Saturday. Yeah, um, as a manager. Do you know what? We had a bit of an environment where there weren't. Probably Andre. Andre really, Gray, yeah. yeah. But you knew what you are going to get on a Saturday. Yeah, because you yeah. know if you play him right yeah. for him, exactly, yeah. he's going to perform, yeah, which you... we did. We got the ball forward, yeah. we got it in behind, and he'd, he'd like powerhouse. Powerhouse he was, in wasn't training, he? training, he could be made of rubber at yeah. times. You know what I mean? <laughs> as you know, you know. Uh, great lad as well, though. great lad. He is great a great lad. lad. I love him to bits. Um... Manager's pre-match meal before a game. I weren't too precious as a player. I was a bit more precious as a manager. Kind of whatever the chef. Yeah. Got, you know, they just we wouldn't have a meal meal like a um, unless you were the team. I'm sorry, in the manager room, you mean? No, I mean sort of like you know when the, the, that twelve o'clock oh. or a three o'clock kickoff. Do is you there anything? You, you... Well, you do that thing, don't you? Where it's um, a buffet. Yeah. So just that I'd, yourself. Yeah, I just have whatever. I, I as a player, I was, I was into it, but as a manager, just whatever I fancied on there. You know, you get anxiety in that, so it's a bit, yeah, you don't yeah. really want it. You know, weird thing, when you sort of know you've got to eat, even as a manager, but you sort of like, oh, just get through know. it. Yeah. Don't yeah, matter what in. it is, just yeah, get through it. In. You know, I always thought you could do it as a manager. Something that you absolutely adore, like a bacon sandwich. Oh, you yes. know, no matter whether you're anxious or not, you're yes. going to go, oh, you smell it and you go, I'm going to have a bacon sandwich. Hey, you can pull them strings and get a bacon yeah, sandwich. in front of the lads. Isn't it? Brown or red? Snaff. Sauce. Either depend on the mood for me. Oh, I like it. We, um, yeah, uh, no, we're not in front of the players. You when can't do when it. we was at can't Birmingham, when I was at Birmingham, and this is, what, 12 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, um, I would have a bacon sign here for a pre-match meal. The chef yeah. would, make a, would, would make a point I'd of bringing a few Nicky out Laura and there'd be a few players. He always had that sicky sort of stomach, so he wanted something he wanted. Yeah, he wanted to stodge, have something he actually something. wanted, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be madly against it, but just think in front of it. But you know the players now, they're big long You've got to set an example, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and all that sort of stuff. Um the best way Sean Dyke celebrates a big win. Calmness, usually. Yeah. I just feel right. It's hard to explain. I don't really not one for running up and down the sidelines. Um, no, just, I'm talking like afterwards. Right. What are you doing? Are you going home and chilling? Oh, you going down the same pub sort for a few? Of thing, yeah, out with the lads sometimes, yeah. out with the family. Um could be anything. But just that inner calmness, that yeah, inner nice. well well being feeling, yeah. you know, you just go Premier League's a tough yeah. league, isn't it, mate? To get a win, yeah, honestly. Yeah, not many wins, mate. Mate, just to you get, get 10, a win. 10 11 in a season. Yeah, true that. That's you're taking that. So, Bloody right. Like Steve Bruce always made me laugh. He said he didn't mind the championship because uh, he had loads of good weekends. Yeah, damn <laughs> you know, right. You know, because he wins well. so many games. You damn know what right I mean? But, as well. Um, what's your favourite pre season destination? Is there somewhere you always went with Burnley? Was it the same not, hotel? Not always, but the ones that we found worked really well for the quality was um, more recently was the campus in uh, Quinta de Lago. Oh, yeah, nice. Went there a few times. The lads loved it. Yeah. You know, can get hot there, but not crazy hot. Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. the facility there is fantastic. The whole thing is a bit like Soho Farmhouse, the building, but equipped. And the pitch was amazing. Um, Evian, I think. Probably the best one, the most elite one, looking over Lake Geneva and that oh. beautiful, stunning place. And the hotel was amazing. Pitches were amazing because they'd done them for the Euros. I think Germany went there and put money into the pitches. Yeah, so yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, that's that's top draw. That is. So they're probably the, the two outstanding ones. Oh, we've, had, we've had some good trips. Carton House was good in Cork, was good. Nice. Fighter Island in Cork. Mainly for the memories, you I know. I think I've done a Cork one. A Cork one yeah, was good, yeah. to be fair, yeah. Um, do you enjoy pre-season training as a manager obviously as a player it's a bit different but as a manager do you enjoy that pre-season 
I do when it, when you see the player. You know, sometimes you, the players look on it. They yeah. look right, you know, and you just go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling that straight away. The ones when you're going, oh. Really, yeah. Really right, yeah. I remember when we got into Europe, the, the next pre-season, the lads come in with a bit of pump and all that, and I'm going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I could smell it early doors. I thought, hang on a second, these are having it. These are thinking like, we're in Europe. And I'm going, no, it's not going to be like that. Lads. No chance, mate. And we had a shocking start. We got 12 points after 19 games. Yeah. And I could smell it in pre-season. I thought, oh, no, these are... Really? Yeah, just got that. That sets little, the tone for the season. Yeah, almost like we're, we're sort of, oh, we're in Europe. We're, we're, I'm doing a bit now. Then all them weird things when players, it's the weirdest thing, they start deciding I need this and I need that. And then oh. you go, hang on, you didn't need that three months yeah. ago, so why do you need it now? Yeah. That's interesting. So I could smell it. Whereas other pre-seasons, I remember the first year we got promoted um, at Burnley, got rid of a load of players, only bought three free transfers in, but I tell you, you could smell it. Yeah. You know, Danny Ings was on fire, on Trips was on fire, Jason Shackle was playing. You just thought, Phew. and suddenly, you know, Charlie was doing great, but then we sold him for some Vokes was doing it. And all of a sudden you went, Dean Marnie, remember Dean Marnie was like a Rolls Royce. Yeah. And he just set the tone and you thought, we're having this. Dean yeah. Marnie, I'm telling you, Rolls Royce. I love that. Um, so, do, you think, do you think a team like, like a, say like a middle, middle sort of Premier League team, like at that time Burnley had an amazing season, but I almost think getting into Europe is an absolute, it's a problem for teams like Burnley, isn't it? It is, it is. And, and you, you can't win, can you? Because the, the kudos that it brings to the fans and yeah, that is yeah. amazing. They're like, wow, I couldn't believe it. Progress you know, as well, 50 years. Yeah, progress and all that. But you look at them fixtures, you know. We had a nightmare. We, we had like Olympiacos, so you're travelling overnight and all that. We had, th I can't even say it, a section bore or whatever it's called, some long name in, yeah, in Turkey. You're traveling through the night, you're having like no sleep at all. Sunday, and Thursday. Then, well, we, I remember we flew overnight, we played out there, we have boiling hot and all that, flew overnight, haven't got a massive squad, got up, got up the next day. Then you're in that dilemma, do we get them in, do we not, for a warm down or not, because I need their rest and yeah. sleep. Then we had to train the next day, then we flew down to London to play Fulham or something away, and you, the players just look like... Phew. It's that mental it's fatigue, really isn't it? Tough, yeah. the mental and the fatigue. The pre-season starts really early, the games. Yeah. So then you're sort of using the games to try and be like pre-season games but you know they're real honestly it's really it's really tough the bigger clubs still tough for them but the difference is they've got squads you know yeah, you might have 25 it. international football you almost need two like 11s that. don't you two starting yeah. 11s yeah you do yeah. or a couple of really handy kids who are going to support the group and yeah, yeah, play yeah. their part and we didn't have that you know and the Premier League was a build and end all so amazing kudos to get there and amazing for the town and the place and all that tough really tough tough on the players yeah. tough on the organisation the logistics and all that are you a fan of the five subs now? Well, I was against it, but I, tr I tried to clear up the point that it favours the bigger clubs because obviously they can put, you know... They've got five the worldies happy. on the bench. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep the players happy, rotate and all that. And we didn't have that. So mm. my point was purely a logical one. It wasn't about, um, I'm against it. If I was... I don't actually said this, but obviously, you know, if you say something common sense, it don't make a story, does it? So, but I actually said, I said, if I was pepping them, I'd want five subs. Of course yeah. I would. Why wouldn't you? Of course. Clark Pep and all them, you go, brilliant. Look at my bench, they're all happy. I can throw them all on. You know, we're 3 0 up, give them a game, they're happy. They've got five fifty millions yeah, sitting yeah, on exactly. the bench there. Like, yeah. So it favours them, you know what I mean? We we wanted them when they're like a bit fatigued and all that, don't yeah, we? We sure. don't want them putting five brand new world class players on. So it's more of a a, a defence of Burnley at the time, yeah. going, Well, look, we, well, that's not gonna favour us. Yeah. But if I was at a different club, of course, different. Uh, who is the biggest player, the biggest named player that you almost signed? Is there somebody that ever has been that I tell close? Everyone, and everyone sort of throws in names like this, but it's true because I met him in holiday, it was Harry Kane. Oh, really? But it was when Harry Kane had come out of, do you know the season he'd been on loan a couple of times, hadn't really worked yeah, for him, yeah. in Norwich and Leicester and that, yeah, he'd yeah. sort of been a bit part. He was in Portugal, I saw him and I said, look, met his family and all that, just by chance, chatting with him and all that, knew him from the Mill days. I wasn't there, but I mean, the lads there all spoke really highly of him, really liked him. I phoned up about him, but at the time, they, the, I think it was Tim, Tim Sheld immediately said seven million, and we were in the market for like three. Oof. And I was like, seven mil for a young lad unproven. And, and, yeah, Oof. unproven, exactly. And you're Burnley. And I said to the board, I said, look, I, you know, and they went, we can't do that. Do you know what I mean? Now, you might have even got, I don't know, five plus add ons, but at the time, we were looking at, I think, George Boyd record sign at the time for like three million. Yeah. So we just couldn't do it. Boyd, he was an animal, by the way, up. wasn't he? He yeah, could run some end, bloody hell. Yeah. But Harry Kane, I always thought he was an amazing player, still do now. You know, when they, you know, people question him in the press and that, I was going, you've got to be kidding me. Hey. I said, let's say at the end of the season and Harry gets another 25. As so always, as go, usual, yeah. yeah. Top pro as well. Top, top yeah, lad, yeah, top yeah. Um, right, a little bit more general now. Any hidden skills, Sean Deitch? Not, uh, no, not overly. Just pretty normal stuff. Boom, leave it there. Favourite meal? K 
curries, love a curry. Yes, yes, yes. yes. With, a, with a pint of kingfisher, preferably. Oh. I still like cobra, but kingfish is my one. Favourite drink? Only one, of course. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite drink? Joking apart, water. Yeah. I, I lo I'm mad for what everyone always goes, oh my God, you know, drink gallons of it. If I'm out with the lads, a pint of lager. Yeah, but, but generally water. Is uh, there, sorry, I've got one to throw in. Um, sporting bucket list as a fan is there any big sporting event you'd love to go and see I think I think although it probably I'm a bit impatient me so it probably drive me mad but I think on your on your CV of sports events probably the um, Super Bowl or something yeah, 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 it probably nice. drive me mad because it's so slow and all the breaks but it's a massive event and it's a world renowned event you know so you saw a Monaco Grand Prix was a little version of that because obviously imagine, it's renowned because yeah. it's Monaco and all that I was pleased to go there and got looked after incredibly but Something like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not pressured about these things, but something like that would be. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah World yeah. Cup final and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, World Cup know. final, I think, is my one, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, idol growing up? Uh, football. Anything? Probably football, Glen Oddle, I yeah. think. The world stars Maradona and all that, but probably in, in the English game that time, Glen Oddle, because yeah. I was a midfield player then and loved the way he passed it and all that. Sporting idol? Um <sighs> I think there's so many now, you yeah. know, so many I respect. Do you know what I mean? In football, I must say, my, my number one would still probably be Ronaldo for the fact he's done it at every club, you know, more or less. Mm -hmm. You know, Messi's amazing, but yeah, you know, you. Ronaldo's travelled to other clubs and Different still countries. done it. You know I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cultures, countries, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. just does it forever. Um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Too, ma too many to me. I love top golfers and top, top elite players in all sorts of sports. I love them. You know, Federer and people like oh, that. Yeah, you know, oh, I mean, yeah. you look at them and just think top 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 pro top people you know what i mean mm. so any phobias spiders wasps no i don't really do all that nothing no not a problem favorite holiday destination <sighs> yeah again i love traveling yeah. um really love portugal I yeah love places so i'm bound to have a soft spot for that but just love traveling love going all over the place love vegas and places. yeah you know you. just love it you know different different completely different places i think that's been the beauty of probably being out of work for a little bit you get to actually go and do these yeah. places sort of I when mean, you wouldn't normally stuff, though, i still love ibiza and places i love yeah, it some you. lovely little amazing little coves yeah. and that you can dip yourself in the madness if you want to or you can dip yourself in a beautiful little Ibiza's cove it's lovely isn't it yeah so yeah, I'm with you. you know it doesn't always have to be mad places further afield you yeah. know what I mean? the vegas thing must be nice though because we've been in the past haven't we a few times and um you're kind of a bit more conspicuous, aren't well, you? Vegas is, is, we all know it's fake, right? But it's the top level of fake that yeah. you're ever going to go. As long as you, you know, accept can, it, it's fine. Yeah, Who cares? Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't always have to be about mad yeah. culture, which I do love. I've been to Sorrento and, you know, the Amalfi Coast is beautiful and Sicily's amazing and all that. Amazing culture. Oh, Dubrovnik, Dubrovnik, what a place really, that yeah. is. Oh, it must, it's a must go, by the way. Dubrovnik is fantastic. The love people that. are amazing, the place is amazing. It doesn't always have to be about that, though. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it can be a bit of fake. Let your like Dubai, you have four Same days in thing, Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, just go, yeah, look, yeah, yeah. fake, but amazing fakeness. Top yeah. level of everything. You can go about fake. your business a bit more as well, can't you? Like, yeah, especially yeah, in America. It's... Yeah, they don't really, don't really bother you that much, you yeah. know what I mean? But um, Right, final question. Um, what advice would Sean Dyche give to a younger Sean Dyche as a kid, kind of growing up, sort of life advice? Keep that closed, keep them open. I just think, just work hard at everything. I like that, yeah. That's nice. Brilliant. Yeah. Sean Dyche, you're the man. Thank you so much. Cheers, Tops. Mate. Cheers, lads. That was incredible. Sean Dyche is the man up the Foscast. Up the Foscast. Up the Foscast. <laughs> <laughs> you say what he wants, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> just a bit, a bit of humour at the end there. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I love it, Dyche. <laughs> Great. Thank no, we're cool. So Thanks, everybody, for watching. We hope you enjoyed the latest episode of the Foscast. Don't forget to give us a follow on Spotify of the Foscasts.